Hey there, Boots on here. This is a Solar River grid tied inverter. It's a 3000 TL by Samuel Power. It's not working, so if I plug it in. And this is not how you wire these things up, but I've got it wired in. Plug it in, switch it on. I'll try and replicate the fault. So now there's DC of about 180 volts coming in. We'll just leave it to sweat for a minute there and it should wake up. So I got this in an auction a week ago with another five, another four. There it's, it is awake, so it's feeling the DC. And typically what it does, it flashes a fault, no utility. And that's not good. So what I'm gonna do is take the cover off. So the device is still live. Uh, it has an earth, so it shouldn't die. It has a little thing saying void if removed there. So I had to pull that sticker off it straight away. Now it would be a good idea for me not to touch it. But let's see, if it says no utility, then in theory it shouldn't have any voltage over here. I get the multimeter out and attach it here very carefully. So it's definitely got live to there. That was one of my worries. So then it thinks it doesn't. And I've looked this up in the book and it says, it says send it back to the manufacturer. Now this one has a date on it, 2010 on the front board and 2011 on the rear board, so I presume it's 2011 or 2012 kind of making it about 10 years old. Probably commissioned about 10 years ago, something like that. The void sticker wasn't touched whenever I had been in there before. So what can I do here? That's the question. What can I see? You can see a bank of capacitors over here. Uh, these three big fellows with DC cables coming in, I don't know what they are. They're very well potted in aluminium pots. I do see a fuse over here. But I don't see any other fuses or anything over at the AC side, which in theory would be the thing. And I don't see any damage really or any blowing. So let's just put, let's turn it off then, I think is a good idea. So let's plug it out from the mains because it's not doing anything. And if I scroll through here, it's telling me it has generated 16,000, 16 kilowatt hours. Nothing today, obviously. It's given me almost 200 volts coming in, which should be enough for it to start because I think this one is a start of 100 and 100, 100 volt start, so it should be enough. Nothing coming through there. Can you see all that? Not really, doesn't matter. Frequency, and it's saying it's G83 slash two is the system it's on, version 1.10. Select language, reset, E today. And no utility, back to the original warning. So let's plug that out, switch off the DC. So now it is isolated. So it looks to me like there's a DC side and an AC side. A uh, DC side here, because this is where the cables are and the AC side over here. Whether or not I'm right about that, I have no idea. So I've got the multimeter set to resistance. Let's just try attaching it. There's a fuse in here that you maybe can't see. Now, I'm not getting anything there. So let's start if that's something to do with power. A fuse that doesn't have any continuity is normally a sign. So can I get that out? I'll show you that. You can't maybe see it there. In there, that's what I was testing, that white fuse. And I don't see any other fuses. There might be some hidden behind that front board, but uh, I don't see any. 
Uh, just checking again, it is switched off and plugged out and everything else. So I'm gonna need some kind of a hook to get that out. I could try a screwdriver. Doesn't want to come out. Oh, for God's sakes. There we go. Now, let's see what this says if we can. I can't see it. 250 volt, 20 amp, just a 20 amp fuse by the looks of things. So it's an AC. If it's 250 volts, it's probably an AC fuse. If that's blown, that could be the answer. Just check it again with the multimeter. Oh, hold on. No, I'm getting nothing there. All right, 20 amp fuse. If you can hear digital noise in the background or interference of some kind, my ABB inverter is making just under a kilowatt at the moment from solar panels that are covered in bird poo outside. Here's a 13 amp plug fuse, and it is slightly shorter in dimension than the 20 amp, but let's plug that in. If I can, it's barely going to fit, but I'll probably snap in at the end. Right, uh, 20 amps is, is big. 20 amps would be about 4 kilowatts, 13 amps more like 3 kilowatts. So I think that's okay. I'll leave that fuse down there for the moment. What do we do? Let's just you have a look at this board, at the uh, display board there. I'll get the plug and give it some AC. That's AC. Give it a bit of DC. DC. Count to about 20 or something. And uh, we'll see what we've got. It has an on switch, a selector switch here, on one, two. I don't know what they're for. There we go, that might that might bring it into action. There we go, it's lighting up. Heard it clunk. Waiting. Get a fault pretty imminently if it's gonna fuse. Or if it's oh checking, it wasn't doing that before. Maybe it's detecting a grid. Ten seconds, nine. few seconds to go three two one you can hear things clicking relays clicking normal 1496 141 watts wow this is just cra crazy <laughs> I even stammered on the word crazy there because it really is just nonsense this was thrown out all for a fuse I would say you can hear it humming Right now, it's making 140 watts. Green indicator light is on, if you can see that. It's a bit shady. Oh, there are all sorts of inappropriate swear words that come to mind. But this little thing is generating electricity now. What a world. Samuel power. Solar River 3000 TL. Wow, what a success as well. That's that's excellent. So last night I plugged it in and there was nothing. And I just thought, well, I've probably got an extension cord or something running. That's a bit of a dud. Um, wasn't 100% sure on that, but you know. This this kind of thing does my head in. So we're putting out 150 watts, which is probably about right. The sun isn't really on the panels yet. I think it might have one that isn't really in the sun. It's 
So the lower panel here isn't in the sun yet. It's sorts a bit obstructed by the scaffolding up there. I have the scaffolding up for a number of jobs, but one of those jobs is fitting these panels. So while they're up, they're an easy way to play around with some inverters. Happy days. And here's the other set of panels here on a carport, which I've made a video of as well. So this thing is just reading normal state. It's on a 13 amp fuse. I started to talk about it and then kind of wandered off a bit earlier on. A 13 amp fuse is less than a 20 amp, so it's completely safe to try that, although it may pop. Given that I'm only running it on less than half the panels that the machine's designed for, or less than half the voltage the machine's designed for, I think it goes up to five or 600 volts DC. What does it say? 550. 550 volts DC it'll take, so it's it's way under a 200. It's about a third of its capacity, so a 13 amp fuse is adequate because that'll be pumping the power back through that fuse to the grid. Like I, I'm, sometimes I think I'm not particularly clever, but I also think that somebody scrapped this machine because it was 10 years old, not because it was broken. So, so there, 170 watts, just magicking its way from the sun. I'll leave that to chug away, you know, keep an eye on it and nobody will come near it. Cause like, obviously if you stick your fingers in there, well, I don't know, if you stick your fingers in there, the residual current device in the house is going to find out about it pretty quick. That's the fuse in there. I have to sort out a new one. So I've left it to work for about 30 minutes and it's coming up to 260, it was at 280 volts, 280 watts there a minute ago. That fuse is performing in there, but I will wait and get a new fuse and put it back together properly off camera, I imagine. Might even write on it in pen what I've done to it. Probably a good idea. I always wonder about these things because they're very well made inverters. They're you know they're quite an expensive item. Very well made, very clean, nice boards compared to things that I would normally see like washing machines. But I guess they have to be for you know have they have to have good cables for DC and whatnot. You don't often find a machine, we're nearly at 300 watts here. You don't often find a machine that tells you what's wrong with it. Maybe you do, maybe that's a modern world. There's 301 watts. Maybe it's a modern world that the machine has so many computer parts inside it that it will tell you what's wrong, cars and all that kind of diagnostics. But from this kind of stuff I normally fix, there's a process of diagnosis that goes with it that you've got to figure these things out yourself. In this case, I guess I did a bit of figuring, looking at it, thinking, hmm, no power coming in, power coming in, fuse. You know, it's about as much as you can do. I have a feeling all of these things here between the AC in and the fuse are also like various types of filters and chokes to make it not interfere with everything and the grid. I don't know, that's just a guess. There's a couple of relays there that aren't potted, so they must be, or maybe are replaceable items. They aren't varnished around or held in sauce, like the capacitors and all have sauce on them. 320 watts. And that should get stronger as the evening goes on because the sun will come around to face those panels directly. This is wonderful. I think solar panels and uh, these things are amazing. So it's a bit later in the day. There's the sun. There's the panels. I won't say it's bang on but it's only off by a few degrees and it's making 800 watts it was up to nearly 900 a bit ago so that's pretty cool can't go wrong there happy days thanks for watching see you later